Well, hello, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back. Jujitsu 2000 here today. I'm back. I hope you guys are doing fantastic out there. I've got an interesting video for you today. As you can see, I am currently in my parents' fifth wheel. I've got a very cool video for you today. We're going to be talking about taking these three deep cycle lead acid batteries out and replacing it with this Chin's lithium iron phosphate battery. In this video, I'm going to take you through the process. It's very simple, but there are some very important steps that you got to do in the right order to make this possible. So to get started, the first thing that we got to do is we got to disconnect the solar panels from the charge controller. Now this is going to happen up top up here. So for me to do that, I'm going to take a screwdriver here, a flathead, or it's actually a Phillips. And I'm going to disconnect the negative terminal from the solar panels as well as the positive terminal so that there are no solar panel voltages coming in. Make sure that these wires are separated, that they don't have any potential to be shorted out amongst each other. So to do that, all I needed was a Phillips screwdriver. We're going to look right down here in the battery area. We want to make sure that all the power is turned off and from here we're going to just start disconnecting these batteries. So it's very simple. First thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to drop this positive. I'm going to disconnect that. This big thick wire is the one that goes to the power inverter. Uh, have worked pretty good, but we're going to increase our capacity. Right here, this is the temperature sensor from the charge controller, and it's just put on the side of the battery with double-sided tape. We're going to just take that off, and we'll stick it right there temporarily. That's going to go back on the new battery. So we'll just stick this. We'll start pulling these batteries out one at a time. half the capacity of the batteries so even though we had 300 amp hour of lead acid batteries we technically could only use 150 amp hours so when we drop in this new lithium iron phosphate battery it's going to literally double our capacity okay we're going to take the new battery we'll just set it right down in there and then i'm going to keep these i'll probably end up screwing this thing down something like that i'll use a drill for that but we're going to go ahead and connect everything now we're going to start with the battery temperature sensor we'll just put that right there that will give us the temperature of the battery so from here we have negative coming from the power inverter and we also need our negative coming from the solar so that would be this guy right here so we're going to pop in those two negatives. We also have the negative from the NOCO, which is, where is that? Right here. So we have three negative wires here. Negative from the NOCO, negative from the solar, and negative from the power inverter. That's all going to go right there. The reason that I disconnected the solar panels before changing out this battery is because I didn't want any battery voltage to be coming in contact with the solar panels. If you have a charge controller that is being 
powered by solar panels and not batteries, that could cause problems or damage to the charge controller. And we don't want to do that. That's why I disconnected. So now we've got the negatives installed. Let's go ahead and do the positives. I am going to add something here on the positive side. I'm going to add a 200 amp breaker. So the breaker is going to be added, but I'm also going to, I'm, I'm going to fuse this. So it's, it's kind of a double shot here. This will make sense here in a second. I'm going to take this fuse off and then I'm going to put it right back on. So we'll have two different protections. We'll have the circuit breaker and we'll also have a fuse. You technically don't need both. I'm just kind of overkilling it a little bit. And the main purpose of the circuit breaker is so that I have a way to turn on and off the power from the battery to the power inverter. So now in the event that this fuse gets popped, not the circuit breaker, but if the fuse ever pops, we can run a jumper past the fuse because really the only protection we need is the circuit breaker. So it'll look something like that. So we're now we're going to gather all the positives. We're going to get the positive from the power inverter. We're going to get the positive from the solar. And we're also going to get the positive from the NOCO. Now all three of these positives are going to go right here. So we got three positives. When I make this connection and I actually touch this to the positive terminal, there is going to be a spark and that spark is because there's capacitors in the power inverter that need to be charged. So be prepared to see a spark when you make this connection. When this touches this, that's when you're going to see that spark. Don't get scared or something like that if you see that that's totally normal let's go ahead and make that connection very quickly it's gonna spark there it goes now we'll drop this in and that's pretty much all there is to it for the actual battery side of things it did not spark because I had this kicked out I had this open so when I close it that'll now send voltage up to the charge controller so everything is set now. We have this battery installed for the most part. So now that we have everything connected, we're gonna go ahead and connect the solar panel. So we're gonna open these up real good. We'll start with the negative. We'll stick that wire in, tighten it back up. This is gonna allow voltage from the solar panels to go through the charge controller back down to the battery. Make sure that these connections are good and solid. So we are set there. So we're almost finished. Now this next section is probably the most important section of the video. This is the part where we reprogram the charge controller not only to recognize the battery type but we're going to also change the parameters. So what we need to do to enter the setup menu is we need to push and hold the right button down. You'll see this flashing the one that's flashing is the flood that's telling us what type of battery so if we push it again you'll see that it's on sealed now it's on gel now it's on lithium that's where we're going to end up but this says use and that's the one we want right now because use is like the menu which you can go to for settings to change parameters of the charge controller. So we're going to go ahead and push enter. Now you see it's flashing our voltage, 12 or 24 volts. There's 24 volts, there's 12 volts. So we want 12 volts to be our system. We'll push enter again. Now you'll see equalizing voltage. We need to change that parameter down to 14.6 volts. 14.6, we're gonna push enter. The next one that you see is the boost voltage. We're gonna change that down to 14.4, so it's already there. Float voltage, we're gonna drop that down to 13.6 or lower. The next parameter is over discharge return voltage. This one's important. We're gonna drop that down to 12 volts. Okay, push enter. And this is the over discharge voltage 
So this is a warning. We're going to set that at 11. Let's set that at, it won't give me 11 on the dot. So we're going to set that. We'll just go ahead and make that 11.1. We'll push enter. Now it's asking us what battery type we need. We're gonna go, like I mentioned a second ago, we're gonna select lithium iron phosphate and we'll push enter, okay? So once we're done, we'll push and hold enter. Make sure that it has lithium and 12 volt and we're good to go. 13.6 volts is our battery right now. In the event that that drops below 11.1, Remember, that's what we set for our over discharge voltage. When this drops below 11.1 volts, our charge controller is going to freak out. It's going to give us a warning. It's going to tell us, hey, we got some problems. You're going to see this fourth light illuminate, and it's going to give us a code of E1. If you see a code of E1 on the screen, that's telling us that our battery is over discharged. And again, that will happen if the voltage drops below 11.1 volts, okay? So there's nothing wrong here with the, with the over discharge voltage warning coming on because the battery management system on the battery that we just installed down below, that over discharge voltage on the BMS kicks in at 10.8 volts. So at that point, the battery itself will disconnect and you will not have any voltage. So the reason we set this higher, like I said, it's at 11.1, is so that this safety net of the charge controller will catch us before the BMS stops the power on the battery. So hopefully that makes sense to you. So that's really all there is to it. Uh, for those of you who don't understand what BMS means, that is battery management system on the Chin's battery. And again, if the voltage drops on the battery voltage drops below 10.8 volts, the BMS will shut off the battery voltage to protect itself. As you can see here, the solar panel is charging the batteries and we've got our parameters set everything is good to go. There's a last minute change that I made that I wanted to let you guys know of and that's this wire right here. You can see this wire is protected by a fuse. This is the wire that comes from the charge controller to the battery. I had this wire here but I decided to change it and put it here. The reason I changed it is because remember I mentioned earlier that if your charge controller is not connected to a battery and you have solar power coming into the charge controller you could actually damage your charge controller so in the event that this trips if this wire was still here it would break that connection to the battery so the result of that would be the charge controller would have potentially solar power coming in with no battery voltage so since it's protected by a fuse right here I went ahead and put it direct. So this negative here comes from the charge controller and this is the positive from the charge controller. So it's protected. So basically that's these two wires right here on the charge controller. Well folks, I want to say thank you for joining me today on this video of swapping out these 300 amp lead acid deep cycle batteries to a 300 amp lithium iron phosphate battery. The process was very simple. Recharging or reprogramming the charge controller was very easy. Hopefully you understood that. I hope this video helped you out. Please feel free to leave comments down below, like this video, share this video, and until next time folks, thanks for stopping by. I hope you guys have a beautiful day. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.